Hi, my name is Spencer, and today I'm going to talk to you about Bayesian mixed effects models in R. We're going to be using Stan, and we're going to be using some wide priors in Stan. If you look here, we have an example of what our priors look like inside the code. We'll talk about the code later, but I just wanted to point out that we're going to be using a wide prior in our code today. Uh, you can see our parameters are 0 and 100. So it's not going to be a flat uniform prior, but it's going to be pretty spread out and pretty flat regardless. Some R packages you might want to install beforehand are DevTools, LME4, GLMER to Stan, LMER Test, and RStan. The data we're going to be looking at is the sleep study data. It's a data frame that's built into the LME4 package in R and it has 180 observations on three variables. Those are reaction, which is average reaction time in milliseconds, days, which is the number of days of sleep deprivation, and subject, which is the subject number on which the observation was made. So what they did is they deprived people of sleep for a certain amount of days and then measured their reaction time. And first we're going to look at the frequentist method so we can go ahead and compare that with the Bayesian method when we use that later on. Uh, the first thing I did is I used a basic model. We have just the regular LM linear model function and we just modeled reaction on days. As you can see down below our estimates for intercept is 251 and uh, days is 10. So for that guess every extra day adds 10 milliseconds onto the reaction time so it does slow them down. If you look at the fit here the fit kind of fits the data but not very well and the reason for this is that you're fitting one line to try and fit the data for every single subject so what we need to do is we need to use a fixed effects model and we're going to use one with a random intercept so what that means is that we're going to fit a model for every single subject instead of just fitting one model for all the subjects. This is still using the frequentist method using the LMER function and we have reaction modeled on days with our random intercept with subject. So we get the same results as with the simple linear model but if you look at the graph here, you can see that we now have a line fit to every single subject instead of just one line for all the subjects, which makes a lot, a lot more sense. If you look at the very bottom, you can see the AIC, which measures the fit of the model. The model with the fixed effects has a smaller AIC than the simple linear model, so that means that model is the better fit. So what we want to get to is the Bayesian method using Stan. So we're still going to use a linear mixed effects model with a random intercept, but we're going to have our we're going to set up our own priors. The prior we're going to use is the one that I showed earlier, and I'll show you how to to code that here. So to start with, we're going to be using Stan. Although one thing about Stan is that it doesn't like it when there's a categorical variable so we have to change that into an integer instead so that first line that I have here where it says sleep study subject index as dot integer that's changing the sleep study subject into an integer format where we have 1 through 18 for all 18 subjects then we set our MCMC parameters for our Bayes model so we need to choose the our warm-up or burning period. On here we chose 100 so the first 100 samples are not going to be included in our estimate. This allows our estimate to get closer to converging before it starts counting the samples towards our estimate. Next we have the number of total iterations. The number of iterations we have is a, is a thousand. So this is the number of steps per chain. So each chain is going to try and converge on the best estimate. 
because we're not using the first 100 samples, we use the next 900 to try and guess what our estimate is. The higher number of iterations you have, the better, but that also increases the time it takes the stand to run. The number of trains I chose is five. You know, the more trains, the better, but that increases the, the time a lot because it's running a thousand iterations for each chain. So that means we're going to have 5,000 iterations if we have five chains. You want at least two chains because if you only have one chain, it may converge on the wrong estimate. So having at least two chains, you can check that to see if whether one chain veers off in a different direction or not. Obviously the more chains the better, but it'll take a lot longer to run the more chains that you have. So the next step is to set up our LMER to stand function. All you have to do is set up your model. It's the same as the linear mixed effects models we have earlier with reaction by days and subject. Subject index is our subject changed into integers that we talked about earlier. Warm up is the, the burning period which we set. Iter is the number of iterations and chains is the number of chains which we already set as well. After you run this it'll take a while depending on how many chains and iterations you have but the output will look something like this below where it shows iterations one to a thousand. You can see the first hundred are part of the warm-up and then the rest of them are labeled as sampling and in our case it did that five times once for each chain. So next what I've done is just a simple print function of our LMER to stand function. Uh, the output's kind of rough. It has our estimates not only for the intercept and for days and sigma, but it has an estimate for each subject as well because we fit a line to every single subject. The standmer function is much cleaner, but it doesn't show as much. One thing the print function has that the standmer function doesn't, if you look on the bottom of our slide here, there's two columns that say n underscore EFF and r hat. The n underscore EFF column is the number of effective samples for each chain. So if you look at intercept, it says 577. So what this does is it measures autocorrelation between the different samples. So for instance, beta days has 4,500 effective samples which means all the samples were effective and there's no autocorrelation so maybe we need to increase our chain's length there. Sigma however only has 39 effective samples so it's highly correlated. The R hat column measures the convergence of the different chains. You want it to be between 1 and 1.1. Can't be below 1. Anything higher than 1.1 suggests that it doesn't converge well. Alright so next we have the the cleaner output, which is the Stanmer function. If you look here, it doesn't have the estimates for all the individual subjects. It just has the main estimates for the intercept and the days and sigma. So the intercept guess here is 249, which is just too smaller than the uh, guess that we had using the frequentist method. So it's pretty close, just a little different because of our prior that we had. The days is 10.5, which is pretty close to the 10.4 that we had using the frequentist method as well. All right, so say for instance that you want to see what the model looks like that you're using in the stand function. What you can do is take the name of your function and put at stand model like we have on the slide here, and it'll pull up the model that it's using to run all the stand code. If you look towards the bottom where it says model here on the slide, you can see where I got that code from the beginning where it chooses the priors that we use. If you wanted to change the priors, you could change them inside of here and then set it to a new model and then run it again to compare it to the other model. In here, like I said at the beginning, we just have a, a pretty flat uniform prior with values 0 and 100. Lastly, if you want to look at the chains that you ran to make sure that they all converge properly and that they're not breaking any assumptions, you can do a trace plot. Here we have 10 different trace plots. There are more of them 
you can specify how many show up inside the trace plot function. What we're looking for in these plots is whether or not the chains look like they are converging. So each one of these plots shows all five chains that we used. You can see some of them have a chain that seems to stray for a little bit before joining up with the other ones. They look kind of fuzzy, but in this case fuzzy is good. It means they're centering around the correct estimate. We don't want them to get stuck though because that means they're too correlated. So the, the fuzziness in this case is a good thing. The gray part on the side of the graphs there is the burn-in period. So those parts are not counting towards the estimate, but the rest of it is. So it might be that we want to increase the burn-in period since there are a few that have a chain that strays for a while before finally converging with the other estimates. So that pretty much covers the basics of the Stanmer function and using Stan in R with the flat uniform prior. I would also like to thank Christian Gonzalez for his video on YouTube titled Bayesian Mixed Effects Models, a tutorial with RSTAN and GLMER to STAN, as this is where we got most of our information. So yeah, thanks for helping us out there. I hope all of this information is able to help you out using the STAN function in R and is able to save you some time running Bayesian linear effects models. That's all. Thanks.